Today I am camping at this amazing dispersed camping site in Washington. Hi, I'm Christine. After starting Life Over in 2020, I'm using seasonal work to build financial security, experience new places, and most importantly, keep living life as a big adventure. Come along as I live like a local in desired destinations, spend time in nature hiking, backpacking, and living out of my car, and craft the trips of my dreams on a backpacker's budget. Not too far from Mount Rainier. Um, I've actually been here for three days now, and yesterday I didn't see anyone at all. Um, today I saw one car and an elk. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's probably one of the most beautiful campsites I've ever stayed at. I just drove up from um, Southern California because I'm starting work at Mount Rainier um, tomorrow for the summer. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited to kind of see where I'm going to be working and um, see my housing and all that kind of stuff, meet new, new people. But later on today, I actually have a Zoom call for my work prospect for next winter, which is the Austral summer. So um, between October and February, I have been offered a work assignment at McMurdo Research Station um, in Antarctica. <laughs> um, that's a pretty big commitment to go to Antarctica um, for five months. So I'm just trying to find out as much as possible about it. And I'd really like to be able to hop on this um, Zoom call, um, just like an informational session. Um, it's optional, but um, like I said, I would really like to get onto it. So I think I'm gonna head over to Packwood. unexpected about living out of a vehicle is that there's a lot of time spent cleaning. <laughs> I mean, I guess it depends on each person's specific level of cleanliness, but I think people in my family gen generally tend to be quite clean. And so, yeah, I clean my car out at least once a day. In doing that, I've definitely had some thoughts more recently. Um, actually, while I was at that campsite, I wrote down and drew some diagram of a bunch of ideas I have to improve my systems of organization and really streamline the vehicle. Um, because while I, what I have works, and I think it works well, and it's something that I put together for a very low cost, um, I think I have changed a little bit since I initially made the setup. And one of the primary ways that I've changed 
is that I really value having a smaller volume of things. Um, and now I know what I really use all the time and what I really want. And so there's a few different things that I would like to fabricate or um, partner with somebody in fabricating in order to have like the very specific customized setup that I want. One of the things I'm referring to when I talk about volume is that, um, for example, I was using that um, trifold memory foam mattress for a couple of years and I honestly, like I still stand by it. I definitely slept much more comfortably than I am sleeping right now with that mattress. It fit perfectly in here. Um, it, yeah, I slept really, really well with it. However, it is quite voluminous. And so um, since I don't have that right now, I've been using um, just like a backpacking air mattress which is not working great for me. Um, but I think there's sort of somewhere in between that I could um, come to because we're talking the difference of like something that's like this big to something that's this big. And I would like to be able to really just tear down my sleep set. Now that I know and the type of things that I have been doing and probably will be doing much more of in the continued future is um, actually fully using my car as a camping base. Um, so instead of like having a tent and having like a camp kitchen set up over here and there and taking up all that footprint, I really just use the car as my footprint and I like having that option. I pull, you know, my table out here and use this as a prep space for my kitchen. I also use it as a desk. It is a full table, so if the appropriate situation arises, I can pull it out completely. I just don't find that I'm doing that as often. I find that I'm using it like this. So, um, just like those kinds of little changes, how I know that I can make um, some systems in my vehicle that I will really use it, that will make things easier. They shouldn't really cost a whole lot. Um, I do have some more expensive ideas that might come later on down the line, but um, we'll see how much I can get done with that, any of that <laughs> this summer um, since I will have pretty limited resources and space in order to fabricate anything. So um, it might be a little bit further on down the road, but I did take some time to like draw out diagrams and put, um, explain what my thought process is so that if I need to in the future refer back to those things, it is ready for me. One of the things I'm referring to when I talk about volume is that, um, for example, I was using that um, trifold memory foam mattress for a couple of years and I honestly, like I still stand by it. I definitely slept much more comfortably than I am sleeping right now with that mattress. It fit perfectly in here. Um, it, yeah, I slept really, really well with it. However, it is quite voluminous. And so um, since I don't have that right now. I've been using um, just like a backpacking air mattress, which <laughs> is not working great for me. Um, but I think there's sort of somewhere in between that I could um, come to because we're talking the difference of like something that's like this big to something that's this big. And I would like to be able to really just tear down my sleep set. Now that I know and the type of things that I have been doing and probably will be doing much more of in the continued future is um, actually fully using my car as a camping base. Um, so instead of like having a tent and having like a camp kitchen set up over here and there and taking up all that footprint, I really just use the car as my footprint 
and I like having that option. I pull, you know, my table out here and use this as a prep space for my kitchen. I also use it as a desk. It is a full table, so if the appropriate situation arises, I can pull it out completely. I just don't find that I'm doing that as often. I find that I'm using it like this. So um, just like those kinds of little changes, how I know that I can make um, some systems in my vehicle that I will really use that will make things easier. They shouldn't really cost a whole lot. Um, I do have some more expensive ideas that might come later on down the line, but um, we'll see how much I can get done with that, any of that <laughs> this summer, um, since I will have pretty limited resources and space in order to fabricate anything. So um, it might be a little bit further on down the road, but I did take some time to like draw out diagrams and put, um, explain what my thought process is so that if I need to in the future refer back to those things it is ready for me I have um so I came down mm -hmm. north south I came through Packwood and um then shortly outside of Packwood I found a forest service road where I still had cell service um I think it's National Forest Road 48 um, so I came up a couple of miles up that and just kept an eye and I still have service here. So that's cool. Uh, I'm going to make lunch and then I have about an hour for my call. Also on the drive, I found a bunch of firewood. Um, it looked like somebody had just like left it, um, at this campsite that I accidentally drove through. I'm not going to use it here, but I'm going to get it out of the way so that I can make lunch because I don't really have a proper place to store this. Um, and I'm not going to be camping here tonight. There's another place that I'm going to be camping um, that's much more suitable, but it does not have any cell service there. So I'm just hanging out here until after I get off the call, which will be about four o'clock. And then I'll head over to the campsite for tonight and since it is quite chilly I look forward to having a fire um, it's about 50 degrees um, depending on my elevation it's been vacillating into the high 40s or low 50s but we'll average it at about 50 it feels colder than that to me um, but I think it's because of the humidity um, there's quite a bit of cloud cover. The sun is not coming out and, um, I think just the relative humidity based on what I have experienced more recently in Southern California and Utah, even though, um, the temperature is not significantly cooler than some of those that I experienced in Utah, it's much more humid. So it kind of just like gets into your bones a little bit. So I feel cold today. Um, but I'm going to eat that maybe that will help. And I'm thinking I might just make like pasta for lunch. Um, that way I can just have something nice and warm. Um, and hopefully that'll warm me up a little bit. <laughs> it's on the program if we have any, uh, to be honest right now, we're standing by to stand by, you know, uh, we submitted the... Um, so this is my backpacking sleeping mat. I've been using it backpacking for a few years. It's the Big Agnes Q Core SLX. It's fantastic. It is not working well in this instance. Um, I think it's it must have like a small hole. This has been great for backpacking. I do recommend it. I love it. Um, I might just replace this one for backpacking if I can't repair it, but I will try to repair it first. But for the car, I would like to try an inflatable. I would also get one of those little air compressors. And then I grabbed my pillow. This pillow is by Nemo. And I think it might be called, hold on, let me look it up. It's Philo, 
F-I-L-L-O. And it has a cover on it. Came with this. But inside, it's inflatable, but it also has like a layer of memory foam in here. So ideally, I would like maybe a sleeping pad similar to that. So a thin layer of memory foam with the inflatable. I don't know how much volume that would end up taking up, but it's something that I'd like to play around with as an idea. get it all in one go. Okay. Oops. One more. Shall we do a little fireside chat? I feel like how, um, so I was on the conference call for a little over an hour today um, kind of just a question and answer session info session updates about what things are looking like with the Antarctic program for this Austral summer so that's the North American winter October through February um, it was a good call has me invigorated to um, take care of my physical qualifications. So I need to get clearance by a dentist, doctor, that kind of stuff. And then there is a um, enhanced background investigation that will come. So I need to be on the lookout for requests for information on that. But as I wait for it, I can start putting together the information that they'll be requesting for that investigation. Um, yeah, so I kind of need to get on that because time seems to go by really quickly. And my deployment time would be about October 1st. Um, they did say that I could essentially not find out until a couple of days prior to my deployment of what the actual date is, um, but to not be nervous about that. So that's interesting, but I can be flexible. Um, they talked about some recommendations for packing. We get like 85 pounds of personal items, so that doesn't include uniforms. Um, uniforms are in a separate weight category. And um, what was the other thing? We get um, cold weather gear, extreme cold weather gear, and that is also issued to us, and all those issuances occur when we get to Christchurch. Um, and then typically it's like a C-17 aircraft flown by the um, Air Force, U.S. Air Force, that takes you on the ice. Um, yeah, so I will have at least one roommate, potentially up to three or four roommates there. It's a 54-hour work week, six days a week of work. Um, but there's like a ton of fun activities. And the question I get from people all the time when I tell them that this is what I'm intending to do with five months of my life in the coming calendar year is, um, what is there to do? Is it just dark all the time? No, it'll be summer there, so it'll actually be light all of the time. Um, there are plenty of hikes, there's cross country skiing, there's bike riding, like fat tire bikes or mountain bikes. There's a rock climbing wall. They do a music concert. There's a craft room. There's a basketball gym. There's a weight gym. There's yoga every day. There's a bar. There's a coffee house. Like there are so many activities to do that they say it's kind of hard to decide which ones you actually want to participate in. Um, so that's exciting.
This stuff is burning up really fast. So they say a lot of the people there are also the adventurous travel kind. Um, and I've heard it said by a couple of different people that if you think you're an adventurous traveler, when you get there and you start talking to some of these people, you realize you ain't done much. <laughs> so I would love to spend some time with people like that. Get some ideas, some inspiration. All of the countries that are there operating on the ice are operating research stations. What kind of research? Scientific. <laughs> um, I don't know, but it will be an opportunity that if I do make it out there that I will um, get to learn more about, which will be exciting. I hope it's not too confusing that I'm talking about Antarctica so much. I am in fact not starting my job in Antarctica tomorrow. I am starting my job at Mount Rainier National Park tomorrow. And I'm super excited to get to see my housing, my accommodations, just get to meet the team. Um, I haven't really had very much correspondence with any of the team there. So um, yeah, I'm going in blonde. And I was driving through the town of Packwood um, to get service for my call today. And I was just like, oh, I can't wait till this comes alive. And there's a coffee roasters and a brewery and just like thinking, oh, coming down from the mountain, maybe some, some days and hanging out there in the town. I don't know. We'll see what ends up happening, um, but I'm sure there'll be plenty of adventures. I feel like, I feel like I did a pretty good job with this fire. I understand the, um, I think, I think I understand the basic mechanism. I just usually don't apply myself. I usually can't be bothered, but I really, really enjoyed the fire I had yesterday. And I think this is gonna be a good one too. Well, it's turned out to be a brilliant morning. It's currently about 8.30. I've been up for about an hour, just kind of organizing <laughs> in anxious anticipation, excitedness of later today, actually moving into my place, getting to see it, getting to meet people, just getting the whole feel of everything because I'm really walking into this quite blind. Um, so yes, I slept very well last night. I slept warm so pulling down that extra sleeping bag was a great idea and my fire my fire burned until like 10 30 p.m it burned for like five five and a half six hours i'm not sure um but yeah it was it was a great evening and i think it's going to be a spectacular day so i woke up looking like I had really been through something last night i think that was a sign that i slept well i tried to pull myself together a little bit and um, I will do a little bit more later, but I'm gonna go into the park and explore. But I'm going to leave you here. Um, so in order to see what it's like for me, my new place, my, do my new digs, um, you're gonna have to watch the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun making this video. Thanks for coming along with me and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.